Right, hi everybody. Hope you're all okay. Um, so this week we are going to be looking at collaging and uh, recycling, upcycling old work. Okay, so this is the um, sketchbook, well one of the sketchbooks with examples in of the things that I've been doing. This was an old monoprint that uh, I used my viewfinder to find an interesting area and then I worked over the top of that with uh, acrylic ink and oil pastels. This is um, a piece of the same. This is a collage, so we've actually got uh, one of my prints of um, a fossil drawing that I did some time ago. This is obviously coffee. Uh, quink and bleach and a little bit of stuff over the top so um, as you can see I'm using a lot of different materials to sort of tie the things together here I've got three different bits of collage and I've added acrylic ink I think the white is a little bit of gouache and there's a little bit of salt and a lot of sprinkling and splashing and flicking and things like that to create this sort of abstract expressive landscapes um, one thing you can think about when you're doing your work is creating borders within borders. Um, this really is a chance for you to be expressive and have a play around and not actually worry about the, uh, the realistic or representational nature of the end results. This really is a chance for you to have a, have a, have a play and have some fun. Here we've got a thick chunky border. This is, I think it's three different collaged materials with, um, this is oil pastel, a lot of ink, some gouache, some stick drawing. So all sorts of different things going on there to create an abstract landscape. This I haven't done anything with. This I haven't done anything with. Oh, where are we going? Right, okay. So there is something I, I stuck in a little bit further on. This is um, an area that I had a look at and I thought there was a possibility. So when you have your viewfinder, you can move it around and decide what sort of area you like. Obviously you can turn it around. Um, oh, you can't see that. Um, wonder, you know, which way, oh, that actually looks like a, a, a bush and a fence with a bit of moody sky and a little bit of a hedge or something in the background but I think I actually quite like it this way. I'm not sure about that bit there. So I would probably go with something around there. So let's have a look, sort of move it around, decide. I quite like the energy of these marks here. So I'm gonna move that over there. Yes, I think I might settle with that. And what I'm going to do, so I don't spend absolutely ages uh, working on an area that I'm not going to be interested in is just um, draw a line around there and I'm going to focus, possibly anyway, focus my attention on this area here. Now you don't have to have a solid viewfinder like this. Uh, you can obviously make your own and I don't know what I've done with them. I just recently cut some out. Oh this is always the way isn't it? Um, yeah, you can cut some out with two L shapes. No, they've gone, haven't they? Of course they have. Um, and uh, that way, if you have um, something that's a lot smaller, oh, there they are, look. <laughs> um, that's obviously looking at this drawing here, this drawing of shallots, uh, some really nice areas in it, but this, it's a little bit difficult to get away from the, the shallotness of it. So what you could do is you, if you've got one like this, you can obviously change um, the dimensions of your aperture and that way you might be able to get something more interesting. You could go long and thin so it becomes landscape. So I really like that bit there and I'd have to think about um, exactly what I could do with it something like that. I could extend this line here, I could get rid of this bit in the background to retain the interesting area that's here and, and turn it into something. A lot of these may well be landscapes but they really don't have to be. You can uh, create your own um, when you limit your imagination really. So something like this, splats, move it around, 
turn it upside down see what you think a lot of this is very soft um some of it is crisper so is is there something that you can find within that that's quite nice there's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of movement within that you could uh, use some of that energy but then actually draw over something else and you could add features okay so let's have a look what else we've got um right okay hold on looking for something else this is very abstract this is uh i think i was whipping it with a stick if i remember rightly <laughs> but you can just uh, again just go in there you might be able to get quite a few out of um each piece and the nice thing about that is that because the, that base color is um similar throughout all the different pieces there'll be a sense of continuity so it's a bit like producing a series a series of work i quite like that actually with that little bit of mustard showing through there okay so i will save that for later um and even sort of paintings uh that you're not happy with you can have a look at those see what you think okay um this is a, a scruffy old drawing that i did sort of looking at that some lots of energetic marks can i actually see anything uh, a bit too abstract i mean it's a lovely sort of shape here that could be a tree what does it look like either way up i suppose that could be that could be sort of like a leaning tree and you could work into these bits here so you're bringing in more foliage down here uh, and then um, let's have a look oil pastel so i'm working on a lot of these with my selenia oil pastels because they're really soft and uh, they are just really great to work with you might struggle if you have um, a really cheap set of oil pastels you might actually struggle with that um but if you've got some nice nice oil pastels it's definitely worth sort of bringing those in so this what's is that similar to that color not quite let's have a look uh that one that might be a good color so yeah go over that just move that out of the way and sort of blend that in um do bring if you've got it a dip pen and your ink it'll be really great to, to get some really oh, really bold marks on here and of course you can do a little bit of flicking and splatting it'd be uh, good to represent um, things like foliage and undergrowth and things like that okay so let's have a look at it now obviously it's still wet so I wouldn't actually I'd wait until it dried to look at it to check on it but already that's starting to look a little bit more like a landscape it's very expressive it's very loose but that's exactly the sort of thing that we're looking for right so that is just drawing straight onto a piece and turning it into something else the other thing that you might look to do is to actually create a collage so i've already established that uh, i quite like this it's almost like a broken fence with a little bit of water underneath broken bridge or something like that maybe so um what i could do is i could use my ink to just draw in again i'll get rid of that i don't, don't want to get ink all over it and don't worry about going out those lines you can carry those lines on if you want to you might want to uh put oh stiff a little bit of blue on there now what i'm going to do rather than just flooding it with water if i can find my <laughs> my spray i can't find anything i've got everything out and i've covered stuff up oh i'm so disorganized i'm sorry about this maybe i'll have to use <clears throat> use a brush and some water i'm just going to sort of flood it in and let that run that's a little bit on the fierce side so what we'll do straight away we'll just go in and just lift a little bit of that out 
so it's not, not quite so strong. I might actually just, oh no I won't because it's still wet, but when this is dry I might just bring a little bit of that blue up here as well. Uh, but what I want to do with this one, I want to include a little bit of collage. So uh, going back to this sheet here, what I could do, I've got some interesting um, liney bits here. So if I tear, tear it in the right direction, I should be able to get um, some sort of collage bits that I can stick on. Now what I would do, if you are collaging, I'd try and stick with a similar colour palette to your base thing. Introducing lots of different colours might work, but it's sometimes easier if you're playing with uh, lots of different elements. Sometimes it's easier to actually just um, stick with the sort of colour scheme that you've already started with. So that's quite, quite dark, isn't it? So, Next, oh, right, tear it away, and then I won't get that silly, silly border. Oh, science of tearing paper, who'd have thought it? I'm doing this under duress, everybody, so this is the kind. So, I might put it there, might put it there, actually. Okay, um, so I'll get some glue on it. Now, if I wasn't under duress because I'm doing this on video, I would, I would probably be uh, taking a lot longer, <laughs> putting a lot more thought into it. But obviously, I'm just trying to give you all an idea of the sort of thing that we'll be doing. I also don't want you to be too precious. I don't want you to think that you're creating a finished masterpiece. You're just playing and um, expressing yourself. You could leave your taggy bits uh, sticking over the edges if you wanted to. That can create an interesting look in itself in your sketchbook. But if you want to trim them off, that's up to you. Now, you could even introduce, if you've got uh, printed pictures, I'm forever printing um, things off. I've got hundreds and hundreds of my photographs, which so this was going to be lino cut. Can you imagine? Um, so if you've got something that is the right sort of uh, texture, colour, subject matter, whatever, there's absolutely no reason why you can't. Um, stick printed images on and again you'll be working over those as well to sort of tie it in you wouldn't necessarily just collage and then um, just collage over the top and then run you'd uh, collage and, and then go in with your pastels and your ink and your watercolors and things like that okay so that's analogous to the rest of the colour scheme so I quite like that. Right so it's a, it's a bit bonkers but it gives you an idea of um, the sort of thing. Once that's dry and that can be an issue I'll talk about that in a second. I'm looking for my viewfinder and I've lost it. Oh this place honestly. Uh, right okay so um, once you have your your image you could draw a thick border around it um, you could just leave it as it is, you could extend it off the page, it can be as big or as little as you like. Okay, now regarding allowing things to dry, I would hope that this week you'll probably produce five, six, seven of these. Okay, so what you will probably want to do is you'll probably want to bring some loose paper so you can put stuff to one side um, and allow them to dry and you'll flip from one to the other and then come back and then when they're all dry then you can actually go and stick them in okay um so i think that gives you a, an idea hopefully the sort of thing that you're going to be doing i hope i haven't waffled too much let me know if you've got any questions okay see you on friday bye bye 
so just when you thought it was safe i'm back so i've carried on working into these two a little bit so i'm just going to put that Ooh, if i can find where it is right okay so i've carried on uh working on this one so that is how it looks now it's a little bit messy um, I would probably let this dry and I would probably then put some glazes or something on these areas to try and uh, knock them back a little bit. What did I do? I added some oil pastel um, and some acrylic ink up here and did a little bit of splashing. I collaged the rest of my um, paper onto here and I just thought it was too bright so I really quickly brushed some acrylic ink over the top and then wiped it off again so there's that bit that I collaged on originally and then I uh, as you can see scribbled over the top to try and carry on this sort of intertwining uh, ivy messy struggly all that sort of thing okay so that is how that one turned out and the other one it's a little bit tidier this one so I carried on um, adding uh, oil pastel into the background. There are a couple of um, trunks, well, what I saw as tree trunks here, which I uh, got rid of. And I just basically worked up the area in the foreground uh, using pencil, acrylic ink, white pencil, um, did a little bit of splashing, because you'll always see a bit of splashing on my work. Um, and it's okay, it's all right. I then drew with a water soluble pen around the outside and just put water on the outside so the inside edge remained crisp and the outside edge ran a bit. What I will probably do is go over that again so it's heavier, so it's like a, a crisper um, definition from this, this messy bit and that. Of course, I could just like stick a little bit of uh, paper over the top of it so it's got a nice tidy outside but I mean it doesn't really matter it's just a piece of sketchbook work okay well, there you go bye